Hello and welcome to the session on APGPHP, which essentially is arithmetic progression, geometric progression and harmonic progression. Hi, I am Ravi and my Twitter handle is at the rate Ravi Handa, which you can use to provide feedback as well as to get in touch. In this particular session, we'll talk about AP, GP and some solved examples. Well, we'll also talk a little bit about HP, but not in great detail. To begin with, we need to first of all understand what exactly is an arithmetic progression. An arithmetic progression is nothing else but a series which follows a particular property. And what is that property? The terms of an AP have the same common difference. Well, what do I mean by that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. That is an AP where the difference between the terms is common or constant at 1. Then what do you say about 1, 3, 5, 7, 9? Is that an AP? Yes, that is also an AP where the common difference is 2. Okay, let's try another one. 113, 123, 133, 143. Is that an arithmetic progression? Yes, it is. In that particular case, the common difference is 10, whereas the first term is 113. So essentially, when the difference between two consecutive terms is constant, it is known as an AP. So now, with the help of this, you can classify what the terms of an AP would be. They'll be of the type A. Let's say A is the first term. Then the common difference D will be added to it. So the next one will be A plus D. Once again, the common difference will be added. So the third term will become A plus 2D. Once again, the common difference will be added. So the next term will become A plus 3D. As you can see, it is increasing by D in each case. Now, what will be the nth term? Well, first term was A, second term was A plus D, third term was A plus 2D, fourth term was A plus 3D, fifth term will be A plus 4D, sixth term will be A plus 5D. So the nth term, as you can realize here, will be A plus n minus 1 into d. So whichever is the term, 1 less than that will be the number of times the common difference will be added to it. Keeping that in mind, what will be the sum till n term? It is given by n by 2 into a1 plus a n, which essentially means the first term plus the last term divided by 2 multiplied with the number of terms which are there. You can also remember a much more handy formula which comes in use much more often. That is n by 2 into 2a twice the first term plus n minus 1 into d. One common confusion that students have is when to use this formula and when to use this formula. Well, it is very simple. Number of terms n is required in both cases as you can see. The first term is A1 is also required in both cases as you can see. In case you are given the last term then which is An then you use this formula. However, if you are given the common difference then you use this formula. Both the formulas are valid. Both of them essentially point to the same sum. So it does not make a difference. Sometimes you are asked to find out the number of terms. That is, first term is given to you, the last term is given to you and the common difference is given to you and you are asked how many terms are there. For example, say 3, 6, 9, 12 and so on. They are in an AP. Now, if I tell you that 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, that is 6 consecutive ones, also lie in this particular series, it will be a fact. How will you find out how many terms are there in the series? Well, what you will do is the last term minus the first term divided by the common difference plus 1. That is how you can find out the number of terms in an AP. 
couple of tips which I have realized from teaching is that if you have to consider three terms in an AP, you can consider A, A plus D and A plus 2D. But it helps if you consider A minus D, A and A plus D. Why? Because when someone asks to ask you to add them, what happens? Minus D and plus D will cancel and your calculations will become a lot simpler. Very similarly, if someone asks you to consider four terms in an AP, you can go ahead with A, A plus D, A plus 2D and A plus 3D. But you can also consider A minus 3D, A minus D, A plus D and A plus 3D. In this case, what is the common difference? It is not D. How many Ds have you added? 2D here, another 2D here, another 2D here. Or the common difference in this case is 2D. Again, these are some things which might come in handy. A very important property for an AP is that if you multiply all the terms with a constant, let's say K, or you divide all the terms with a constant term such as K, the resulting series will also be an AP. So let's say if you had the series like 3, 6, 9, 12 that I was talking about, if you multiply all the terms with 2, what do you get? You'll get 6, 12, 18, 24 and so on, which will still be an AP. If you had divided all the terms by 3, what would you have got? You would have got 1, 2, 3 and so on, which will still be an AP. So the fact that it is an AP does not change provided you multiply it with a constant or you divide it with a constant. What changes is the terms obviously and the common difference. If you are multiplying with k, the common difference will become d. What if it was d, it will become dk or it will be multiplied with k. If you are dividing all terms with k, then the common difference will also get divided by k. Now, if you get a question on harmonic progression, don't be scared. It is not something fancy. It is something very, very basic. And what is exactly an harmonic progression? Well, if the reciprocal of the numbers given are in an AP, then the numbers are in a harmonic progression. Let me take an example to clarify that. Say 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4 and so on. These terms are essentially in a harmonic progression. Why? Because what are their reciprocals? Their reciprocals are 1, 2, 3, 4 which are in an AP. Let me take another example just to clarify this further. 1 by 3, 1 by 6, 1 by 9, 1 by 12. How about these ones? Are these in a harmonic progression? Yes, because their reciprocals 3, 6, 9, 12 are in an AP. And that is what a harmonic progression is all about. Let us look at a GP now. Not very different. They also follow a certain property. Earlier, in case of an arithmetic progression, the difference between two terms was remaining constant. Here, the terms, the ratio remains constant. And let's say that common ratio is R. So what it means is that you keep on multiplying the previous term with R. So you'll have A, AR, AR square and so on. An example would be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and so on. What is happening here? Common ratio is 2. Every term is getting multiplied with 2. The nth term very similar to an AP. A, the first term into R to the power of n minus 1. Why n minus 1? Because R will be multiplied n minus 1 times. Sum till n terms is given by A into 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. And now let's say if you have to sum it till infinite terms, then it will be a upon 1 minus r, which you need to realize is valid if and only if r is less than 1. You cannot have 1, 2, 4, 8 and so on. What will be the sum of this? It will tend to infinity. But if let's say if you have a series like 1, half, 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 16, and so on. What is this? This is a GP. What is the common ratio? Common ratio is half. What is the sum till infinite terms? The sum till infinite terms 
is nothing else but 1 divided by 1 minus half which is again half and what will be that come out as that I think will come out as 1 divided by half or 2. So that is how you can calculate this. Once again very similar to an AP if you have to consider 3 terms in a GP you can consider A, A, R, A, R square just a recommendation try it out with A by R, A and A into R might be a little easier. 4 terms A divided by R cube, A divided by R, A into R and A R cube. Here the common ratio is not R but R square. Why? Well, you multiply all of them, you will just be left with A to the power 4. As if you multiply all of these, you will just be left with A cube. These things, these small little things might save you couple of seconds in an exam which might be very very important. Now let us look at a few questions, few solved examples on these ideas. Say if the 7th term of an AP is 23 and the 12th term is 38, find out the first term and the common difference. Well 7th term is 23 which gives me the equation A plus 6D is 23, 12th term is 38 which gives me a plus 11d is 38. What is two equations, two variables? From the second one, if you subtract the first one, what do you get? You get 5d is equal to 15, d is equal to 3. Put d is equal to 3 in any of these equations. Let's say I put it here. What do I get? a plus 33 is 38 or a is 38 minus 33 or 5. As you can see, very simply, we have calculated both the common difference and the first term common difference came as 3 and the first term came as 5. Another type of question could be how many numbers of the series minus 9, minus 6, minus 3 and so on should we consider so that their sum is equal to 66. Well once again very very simple use the formula which one what do I have now I have the first term I have the common difference and I need to find out the number of terms. Going up just for your reference, we can very easily use this particular formula. I have the sum till n terms, I have a, I have d but I do not have the value of n. So I can use this formula and that is what I have used here. n by 2 into 2a which was the first term minus 9 plus n minus 1 into d which is the common difference which as you can see here is 3 is equal to the required sum which is given to me as 66. Now just solve the equation. I take 2 to the other side so I get 66 into 2. Uh, n remains outside. 2 into minus 9 is minus 18 and 3 into n minus 1 is 3n minus 3. So what do I get? I have minus 18, 3n minus 3, that becomes minus 21 plus 3n. I think 3 can be cancelled from the left hand side and the right hand side. What will I be left with? Minus 21 will become minus 7 plus 3n will become n and 66 will become 22. So I get what? Uh, the equation becomes n into n is n square minus 7 into n is minus 7n minus 44 comes to the other side which gives me a quadratic. I can easily solve this quadratic to get values of n as 11 and minus 4. But you cannot have minus 4 numbers in a series. So only 11 is valid. So that is the answer that we were looking for. Now let us look at a slightly complicated problem in this particular category. I doubt that it would be asked something of this difficulty but still it's good to know. So what I have is here is 1 plus 7 by 5 plus 13 by 5 square plus 19 by 5 cube and so on till infinite terms. As you might realize it is a little difficult to calculate. Why? Because what do I have? I have my numerator 1, 7, 13, 19 is moving in an AP whereas my denominator which is 1 for the first term, 1, 5, 5 square, 5 cube is moving in a GP. So what do I do in such situations? Well, this is what you do. You write down S which is given to you. What was the common ratio for the denominator? 5. 
So now you write down s by 5. 1 becomes 1 by 5. 7 by 5 becomes 7 by 5 square. 13 by 5 square becomes 13 by 5 cube. 19 by 5 cube becomes 19 by 5 to the power 4. All terms have gotten shifted by 1 uh, in terms of what their denominators were. Now, from the first equation, you subtract the second equation. s minus s by 5 will give you 4s by 5. 1 remains 1. 7 by 5 minus 1 by 5 is how much? 6 by 5. 13 by 5 square minus 7 by 5 square is 6 by 5 square. 19 by 5 cube minus 13 by 5 cube is 6 by 5 cube and so on. So whatever you've got, you have got 1 as an individual. The remaining portion is a GP with a common ratio of 1 by 5 and the first term as 6 by 5. Can you sum that to infinite terms? Yes, you can. And which formula will you use? The formula that we had here. A upon 1 minus R sum of a GP till infinite terms. Using that formula, what do I get? My A is how much? My A is 6 by 5 divided by 1 minus R. Common ratio is 1 by 5. So what do I get? 6 by 5 by 4 by 5 which is 5, 5 cancel, 6 by 4 or 3 by 2. So I get this as 1 plus 3 by 2 or 5 by 2. But is my answer 5 by 2? No. Why? Because this is equal to 4s by 5. What was I asked to find out? I was asked to find out the value of s or the sum till infinite term. So I take the 5 by 4 to the other side. What will I be left with? 5 by 2 into 5 by 4. I will be left with the sum as 25 by 8. As you can see, a problem which looked so complex in the beginning can be so easily solved if you just remember the formula a upon 1 minus r and you use this idea that you can divide by the common ratio, shift the terms and subtract. Hopefully, this will come in handy. With this, i like to wrap up this session. You can provide feedback via Twitter or via email. My Twitter handle is at the rate ravihanda and my mail ID is ravihanda at gmail.com. Thank you.